recording. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Juancho here, Computer Graphics. Today, fairly um, brief overview. Um, there's a video that I refer from Dr. Uh, Yem Yaxel, uh, who is, uh, does an excellent job of covering the whole development of the projection matrix and the uh, model, uh, the camera uh, uh, matrix. So I'm just going to overview it here, assuming that you've seen that. So cameras, we've been around for a while. Um, there was a year when Nokia became the largest camera manufacturer in the world uh, because they had cameras in their phones. Uh, now Apple and uh, all of the Android devices, there's more cameras in the world now than there ever has been. And we're taking more photographs than we ever have. And have. Uh, photography started in the early 1800s when they would have this pretty complicated process worth reading about the history of photography. Assignment three is uh, due shortly. Uh, you're doing processing of the uh, .obj files. Um, I'm still playing around with homework four. Um, I don't want you to have to redo what you did in assignment three, but uh, I do want to have excited. But basically at the end of assignment four, you will see objects that look like this, which are textured objects. Uh, in the second lecture that I'm talking about today, we will actually talk about textures and how that impacts. So this particular image that you're looking at here doesn't have that many um, polygons, but it has a lot of detail. As I said, I am assuming that you have watched this particular video. Uh, the link is in the announcements. It's also going to be in the slides when I release them. Uh, please watch that. He does an excellent job. There's no point in me duplicating this lecture for him, and he has kindly um, allowed me to use these videos in my lectures here. It's a, it's a great lecture. I actually enjoyed really watching it. In the last lecture, we looked at WebGL, the application. We did a brief introduction, introduction to GLSL. We looked at how to deal with error handling. We saw that it was fairly primitive. Uh, and I introduced you to the GL Matrix Math Library, which does a lot of the stuff that we need to do. We also performed a rotation, scale. Uh, we learned about uh, another way of communicating with the GPU, which is GL uniforms, where we put uh, data in a common place such that all of the shaders can access it. Uh, and we had a quick look at the .obj file model, which you're working on in this current assignment. So we dealt with the model matrix last. So we can, we're in this situation where we have our eye here that's looking at the center of the screen and there's kind of objects behind them and we splat them this way. Uh, and we saw basically an orthogonal, but that's not a really exciting uh, world because what we'd like to do is take our camera and move it around, the same thing we do with a phone when we're taking videos, etc. So we're going to talk about cameras first. The um, graphics program that we're working will get cameras uh, and so we're going to add uh, cameras and textures into our little baby frame buffer in the lecture um, and then for the assignment you'll see how that works in uh, in the real thing. So where does the camera go? Remember that the vertex shader is responsible for all transformations and so what I'm going to show you is that the camera transformation is actually just another vertex transformation is another matrix that we add to it uh, so we're going to do that in the vertex shader so we're not going to do anything in the fragment shader for the camera uh, we're going to do it in the vertex shader we call this view space or camera space so camera space is when you have your camera this is camera space your your camera is in a canonical or kind of predefined position and you're looking at the world in a very fix remember Computer graphics is all about cheating. And what we're going to do with an arbitrary camera is we're going to convert that particular arrangement of the camera and the objects into a canonical or standard representation that we know how to deal with. So how does this fit into our pipeline? Well, we talked about uh, here's our pipeline. We have our local coordinates, and we do our uh, transformation to the world. That's what we saw last lecture. Uh, and then we talked a little bit about clipping, um, but here's our world to camera transformation. We're going to do that here. There's another clipping thing here. Uh, then we're going to do uh, transformation, and then we do clipping. So clipping is all about just reducing the number of polygons that get down to 
the rasterization here, okay? So we're gonna talk about this one here, the camera projection. Um, what does that look like? Well, here's our object space. Here's this little R that we defined it at the origin. Uh, and then we transformed it, we uh, rotated it and translated it. it. Doesn't look like we scaled it. And then we say, okay, we're gonna have a camera up here looking down at this thing. So as you see the camera goes and touches the center of the camera view is going to be there. And so the camera, we convert this so the camera is now uh, on the z-axis, looking down the z-axis, and then we see a particular spot here. See, that's the same spot. Then we transform that to the projection or a canonical view volume. Uh, and at that point, we can do exactly what we did with our first objects, is we just kind of push those to the screen. We call this the MVP matrix, the model camera, the model uh, view and projection model, which we did last week, the view which we'll do today, and, and Dr. Yuck, uh, Dr. Yuxel covers in great details. Turns out that it's all implemented in the math library anyway, so uh, I really recommend that you dig into understanding how that transformation is done, but you don't really need to know how to uh, duplicate it. You just need to know where Dr. Uh, Yuxel's video is so you can go back and look at it later if you ever have to reconstruct it. It's fairly well documented. In a more standard layout here, uh, we define our objects in local space. Uh, like I said earlier, all of our objects are defined around the origin. Uh, we move it into arbitrary spaces so we can have all of these things happening. Uh, and then we're gonna have world space, uh, a view matrix uh, that converts things into the camera view. Then we project things. Uh, if we're doing perspective projection, then that's where we're gonna get the depth. Uh, and then we're going to get the viewport transformation, which allows us to take the triangles and render them like we did in that first lecture, where we scan converted that triangle. So, how do we do this projection matrix? Dr. Yuxel covered that in his lecture uh, very well. Uh, essentially, what we're doing is we're going to take this frustrum or this this this. Um, cut off pyramid and we're going to convert that to a cube. So here's an example of it. I have my eye here and I'm looking in this direction and I want to convert this tetrahedral kind of this this weird space here which we call the viewing frustrum. I want to convert it so that this size and this size are the same thing. I.e. it's a cube and I'm going to do it in such a way that all of these objects inside of this frustrum are scaled accordingly so that I have um, the relationship between these two. So if, if in this particular face here, it looks like there's th three that I see and at the very, very back here, I can see three that are small. So I expect these to be smaller than these when I do the, uh, the, um, the transformation. So here we are, we're looking um, down the front. So the eye is over here. We're looking in this direction. We've scaled this side of the cube so it's the same size as this side of this cube. This is the back end. Uh, and then what we've done now is we can see that the objects that are closer to the eye look bigger than the ones that are further away. So now if we look straight down this line here, remember here we were looking straight down this line. So we expect to see one, two, three, one, two, three cubes in our view. Uh, again, one, two, three, one, two, three. These ones should be completely in the view and this one should be kind of cut off. And so if I look over here, we can see that we have uh, these three and these three, uh, and these ones are smaller. So again, this is uh, these three cubes here uh, being uh, rendered. Uh, okay, yeah, you're right. That one is actually cut off there. So this one and this one should look the same. This one and this one should look the same. And this one and this one should look the same. So you can see that here. If we could look from above, we would see that this one is fully included in the view. So the uh, transformation from view space into clip space uh, distorts all the objects in a weird way. But what that does, that, uh, that allows us to compensate for the, um, the transform the perspective transform that makes things that are further away look smaller. And again, uh, uh, Yem Yuxel's uh, video covers that in a very adequate way. So 
the order of MVP is really critical. You, you transform the model, then you transform it into the, the camera view, and then you do the projection. That is, uh, as we've said time and time and time again, the matrix multiplications, are, you, you have to do them in the right order. So we transform our object, then we transform it into the view matrix, and then we project it onto the screen, and then you have your final output that you can scan and convert. Other notes is that even though in the shader that we will look at, we will see that the model, the view, and the projection matrix are computed independently and we pass them into the shader, in general, you don't want to do a matrix, two matrix multiplications per vertex. So you pull that out, you do that on the, you do that on the, on the CPU and you pass it in once to the GPU uh, using a uniform such that you don't have to duplicate that model. The um, a whole bunch of resources on this. Uh, when I gave you the lecture on linear algebra and matrices, I told you this is crucial. And here, this again shows you that all of these matrix multiplications are kind of the core of what we're doing. We saw how it allowed us to scale, rotate, and move objects around space and kind of get them in different places. Uh, we are now looking at uh, a view matrix and a projection matrix that allows us to uh, do um, everything together. So um, let's think about the camera, the, the view matrix. So you have a position. So this camera is located at 0, 0, 002 and it's looking at 0, 0, 0. So one of the, you, you specify your camera using three vertices or, or three three-dimensional object. In this case, we're going to have a position of the camera and we're going to have a position of what you're looking at, which specifies the direction that you're looking at. Uh, and then you're also going to specify either a right-handed coordinate or an up vector, one or the other. Um, so we want to figure out how to build a matrix that represents this, this camera. In, uh, in Hollywood, you, they talk about uh, roll of the camera where you spin it around. Uh, you can look up, you can look down, and you can look and left and right, and then you can go forward and backwards. So the position is uh, represented as the I position. Uh, the direction is a view direction. Uh, you can either specify that as a view direction, or you can specify a point and compute the direction based on the, uh, the subtraction of the the look at point from the I, the I position from the look at point. Um, and then uh, you have um, either a right, uh, if, if you have your camera, you can, you know, you, if you're looking da at a point, you need one extra piece of data that indicates whether you're rotating up or down like this, and you can specify that either with a right vector or with an up vector. You just need to either kind of put a stick on it, and we'll do that exercise in class uh, so that you can get a better sense of that. So we... Uh, we have a look at, we will look at it, and then we position this in space. And so how, how do we create our view matrix? We need to rotate the camera and the world. Um, good news is that all of that math that uh, Dr. Yaxel covered in his class is, is incorporated. Every, every computer graphics matrix library has this um, library, the function called look at. Uh, in this particular case, you specify uh, the I position, the look at position, and the up vector. Uh, you need to make sure that the up vector is not parallel to the position from the I to the center. Uh, so we, that specifies that, and that gives us a matrix that we can then, um, that would basically tell us what is the rotation that we need that the camera will do in order to align with the world. So in the, um, the, the, the kind of framework that we're developing for the class, uh, I have actually implemented a simple camera implementation. Uh, and for assignment four, you'll be working on this. Uh, you'll be adding some functionality to the camera, um, to the camera um, class. Uh, but as you can see, we've stored the view matrix and the projection matrix. We have a position, we have a look at vector, we have an up vector. All three of those are, those are the three things that we're using for this camera. Uh, we have an aspect ratio, which is 
the, 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 the ratio of the width versus the height. Uh, we have a field of view, which is kind of how wide angle, and we'll, we'll see this in class, uh, how the, the, you can get like this perspective distortion. Um, and then you also have the viewport width and the viewport height, uh, which are related to the aspect ratio. Uh, then uh, there's a role, uh, which is currently unused, but uh, you'll be implementing in your assignment. Uh, and then there's also a flag for use perspective uh, projection or orthogonal projection. And then I've taken and added the render solid into that canvas. So basically a lot of that stuff that was kind of all over the place in our, our initial implementation of this uh, rendering framework uh, is now going to be encapsulated in the camera. So we can have one camera per scene. And then I've also taken the, the transformations for the models and I've added it to the model library. So you'll see a slightly different version of uh, model GL uh, in this assignment that you had last assignment. So notice, uh, the, here's a, a transformation uh, of uh, a vector sh a vertex shader, uh, and we have our position. For every vector that we get, we multiply it by the model matrix, then we multiply it by the view matrix, and we multiply it by the projection matrix. So in class, we're going to play with this with our little baby frame buffer thing. This is what we did last class. Uh, we're going to do this one and this one and then we'll see that we have this. Now this here, this texture coordinate here, uh, that's, uh, we'll talk about that in the second um, assignment of, of what's happening there. But basically, when you do the interpolation of your uh, triangle, remember we, we, we did linear interpolation on the, on the position and also on the color. Well, it turns out we can do the same thing with the texture coordinate and then that texture coordinate can be used to take the color out of an image, which we'll talk about in a second. But again, look at the order of the multiplications, M, V, P. First, we, do, we multiply the matrix, the vector by the model matrix. So that's our first transformation. And remember that the transformations in OpenGL go from right to left. So here's our vector. We move the model around. Then we do the transformation so that we have the model uh, in, represented in camera space, uh, and then we project it down into the space, and then the, the vector is ready to be handed off to the rest of the pipeline. Let's uh, wrap up with camera. You've, you've walked through the video of Yem Yaksel. Uh, excellent presentation. And if you haven't watched it at this point, please stop right now, go back and watch it, because it really is a world-class explanation of how that does. I don't think I could do it better. So the viewing transformation, we need the camera position, the camera orientation, and our field of view, and again, how many pixels we have. And that was all adequately covered by uh, Dr. Yaxel. Let's kind of look at it from a, kind of a higher level perspective, our eyeball. Our eye is uh, these round things that we have stuck in our head that have holes in the front of them. We can think of them in this way. Uh, we have these uh, round, uh, our, thankfully our eyeballs are not square, they're round, see they're round like this. But we essentially, we have these, uh, the retina at the back of our eye that, that captures the light, and the light goes through here, goes through the little hole in the front of our eye and goes back there. Now, we are not gonna put a frame buffer behind this little eye, we're gonna put it in the front here, uh, because essentially uh, any 2D image that's here will match what's there. So if we can calculate the 2D image out here, we're good enough, we're good to go. So the clip space is this projection, is that space where uh, we've transformed either the view frustrum or the orthogonal into a space that we can clip. Uh, we define that by um, having um, either a perspective projection or an orthogonal projection. Uh, we've seen how that is calculated uh, you've watched the, pre the presentation with Yem Yuxel, and we've actually seen how we take those matrices and we put them into the shader. Uh, let's look at some of the uses for this. So perspective looks like the real world, and orthogonal or oblique looks nothing like the real world. Uh, you can't, there is no camera that takes an orthogonal um, camera uh, shot. Um, so for perspective, we're simulating the real world, or for games, graphics, visualization, uh, orthographic, or oblique, 
is a, a non-real camera that we use to portray information in a different way. Architecture is good for that. Uh, if you have an orthographic uh, projection, then you can actually measure things in that image and they all look the same. So from perspective, here's our railroad. Uh, it goes off into the distance. Uh, here's an orthographic uh, situation. You don't really you want to be able to think about this such that all of the things that you measure are accurate. If I rotate this around, the length of this on the screen and the length of this on the screen are going to be the same, and therefore you get a sense. But it will look really weird. The orthographic or parallel and oblique projection is fairly straightforward. I have my view volume here. Uh, things get clipped outside of the volume, but the way that I do the projection is I just um, go, I basically drop the z-axis, and we, that's what we did in our uh, frame buffer uh, software, and that's what we did when we first uh, did our um, triangle, and in this current assignment where you're loading uh, vertices, you'll notice that we've specifically chosen models that are centered such that you can see them there. The view frustrum, uh, or the, the we call it a frustrum because it's no longer a cube, uh, but think of it as a distorted cube, and we saw earlier in this video how uh, we can stretch that frustrum out into a cube, and then the objects get scaled appropriately such that you get your perspective. And so we clip things. Again, we have a very limited budget in terms of how many uh, polygons we can put on the screen in a particular piece of hardware uh, with a CPU and GPU uh, and so we want to minimize that as possible so uh, things that are really far out here they're so small that we're not going to see them uh, this is some enemy ship to my left and this is some friendly ship to my right but this is a uh, uh, an enemy ship that's coming into my frustrum so I want to see them uh, and this one's fully within the frustrum so we want to see that so we we clip them uh, throw them away because we don't need them for this particular scene. And here you have, you can see as this camera moves around, uh, you know that that tree on the left is sometimes visible and sometimes not visible. There you'll see, and even this this uh, cloud up here, that cloud there, sometimes is visible, and not visible. So you can see uh, what you would do that. But once you have your eye uh, projection, whether it be orthographic or uh, uh, perspective. You then move your eye around, move your look at position, and then you can get uh, the image that you expect. So the field of view, again, is, is uh, how wide your camera is. Uh, in photography, uh, we use different focal lengths for our cameras. Uh, so you have like a fish lens, a wide angle lens, which has a 180 degree view. Uh, and then you go down to fairly narrow focus points that take you and you can see further in the distance. Uh, what does this look like? The frustrum for, or the view pyramid for these uh, different um, frustrum um, field of view angles look like this. And then the good news is that after you've watched all of this stuff by Yem Yuxel and you kind of had this uh, reminder in my view here is that we actually don't have to do all of this stuff because we have this uh, GL matrix camera. So. We're going to start by rendering in perspective uh, and we're going to transform every vertex through the projection matrix and then we'll uh, so that the the, the the view matrix and the projection matrix and then we'll get that all set up we are using gl uh, in gl matrix we are going to use the camera um, you've seen the development of these matrices this is how you use them um, the uh, parameters for this are the field of view, which is how wide the camera is, the aspect ratio, like how uh, wide versus how high your, your screen is, um, the near bound of the frustrum and the far bound of the frustrum. For orthographic, you do the same thing. If you look at my code here, you'll see that I've defined, I have these, these values, um, Field of view, aspect ratio, near plane, far plane. I use the near, the near plane and the far plane in my orthographic projection. Uh, for my ortho, uh, orthographic projection, I specify a box. So this specifies a box. And then you take those projection matrices 
and that view matrix and you attach it as uniforms. There's my uniforms and I say I have, I want the projection matrix, I've computed it, here it is. Uh, I want the view matrix and I've computed it and here it is. Notice that uh, WebGL doesn't provide the functionality for computing the view matrix. You could actually write the code in your shader, but it'd be highly inefficient to do that every time because uh, the camera is static per frame. It makes sense to compute that on your CPU and then pass it to the GPU. And again, that's what we use uniforms for. Uh, and so here are the parameters, field of view, aspect ratio, near plane, far plane. And then we do the same thing for uh, the orthographic projection. So why do we need a, near, a far and near plane? Well, one is for clipping, which we've already talked about. The second is that the uh, perspective projection is a nonlinear projection because of that divide. Uh, and if you have your far plane and your near plane too far apart, the things that are really close to you start to, uh, uh, the, 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 your numerical round-off error becomes really difficult in this thing. And so the things that are closest to you, where you actually need to differentiate what's in front and what's not, you lose the precision and you start to, you start to see what we call X, 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 Z buffer acne, uh, where things kind of pop in front of each other. Uh, so in general, the things that are too far away, they're so small, you don't care about them, so you can just drop them off. Uh, and the things that are too close, uh, they're really close to your eyes. So, so you really want to think of looking through a camera that's in front of your face. And the good news is that now uh, this is the way that we take pictures. Um, just uh, almost done here. So again, there's these other videos that I want you to watch. Uh, here's the video supplements on the camera. Um, we have these courses on Audacity. I've linked them in the um, uh, canvas. Uh, you have perspective, you have the look at, you have the translation, you have the rotation. So the last thing is frames per second. Uh, we will talk about this in the class a little bit. Uh, but frames per second is the number of images that you show per second. If, if you're above a certain threshold, you see it as a continuous movie. And if it's below that, you see them as images. So we want to get above 30, typically 60 is where we're going at uh, because it looks more fluid and stuff like that. So in summary, in order to implement a camera, we cheat once again. Uh, we've transformed everything. So we're looking down the z-axis. Uh, we then do a, a transformation, either if it's an orthogonal, we just drop all the Zs. Uh, and if it's perspective, we do that weird matrix multiplication such that we divide through by Z using um, homogeneous coordinates. And then there you go. You can render your image. Okay, I'll see you in the next video on texture mapping.